Luke chapter 8, verse 22, with our scripture reading. And, uh, and I want to thank Ricky because it was read nice and clear and loud. Amen. Amen. Luke, what chapter? 8. Very good. What verse? 22. And we are familiar with this story. There in Luke chapter 8, verse 22. The story where Jesus goes on the boat, goes to sleep, and calms the storm. There it says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. And we know the rest of the story of what happened there. And this story can also be found in Matthew chapter 8 and in Mark chapter 4. And I'd like to take you to the account in Mark chapter 4, there in verse 35. This story is found in Matthew and Mark and Luke. And in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, I want us to look at it there as you're turning, as you're turning in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. Just a little bit of context. Jesus had been preaching all day. And when you look before uh, this story, before this time that Jesus wants to get away, you see that Jesus had talked about uh, the parable of the sower and explaining the parable of the sower, the, the parable of the mustard seed and explaining it and the, the disciples trying to wonder why does he talk in parables and Jesus explaining why he talks in, in parables and spending all day as Jesus is expounding to them the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And so here, spending all day with Jesus, Jesus is tired. Very tired. And you can read that when you read Desire of Ages chapter 34 regarding this story. Uh, the chapter is entitled Peace be still. And so Jesus is really tired and he wants to calm and, and rest. And what does it say there in verse 35 of Luke of, of Mark chapter 4? It says, on that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side, to the other side. And we see that they get into the boat. There are many boats also along with them. But then it says in verse 36, And when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And others little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. Now this storm that came, came all of a sudden. When you read there, the desire of ages... Uh, account um, in chapter 34, you see she will give us the light that, that everything was fine and all of a sudden the, dark, the, the sky became dark, the wind began to come. And let's not forget that the devil has been on earth long enough that he knows how to manipulate nature and weather. Remember that the devil was the one that brought the storms to Job, that destroyed his, his children and the, and the property. The devil brought those storms. And so here the, the devil brings a storm to the disciples. <clears throat> and the devil will always bring a storm to anyone who is spending time with Jesus. You spend enough time with God and His Word and you're hearing and you're growing, the devil will always bring a storm. The devil is angry. And he has a storm for you and for me. It's one thing to sit down here and say amen. It's another thing to sit during the storms of your life and be saying amen. And in the storms of your life, in the storms of your life, do not forget, friends, that Jesus is still on board. Do not forget that Jesus is still on board. There, just continuing from the meditation that uh, I'd like for you to follow along from my life today. 
And we read this part for the garden of prayer. The Lord is in active communication with every part of his vast dominions. He is listening to every word that is uttered. He hears every groan. He listens to every prayer. He observes the, the movements of everyone. Friends, nothing gets passed by God. Nothing. Not one thing. Even, even a bird, a sparrow, not a sparrow, he said, falls into the ground without the notice of our Heavenly Father. And if the little one, and if the little sparrow is regarded by him, surely the souls of those for whom Christ has died are precious in his sight. It is true, the second paragraph there, that disappointments will come, tribulations we must expect. The storm that Satan brings, friends, should not surprise anyone walking the Christian walk. Jesus warns us and tells us there will be storms, there will be troubles. Tribulations we must expect, but we are to commit everything great and small to who? To God. He does not become perplexed by the multiplicity of our grievances. Praise the Lord nor what? Overpowered by the weight of our burdens. We can become overpower overpowered by so much weight, so much burdens in our lives, at work, at home, personal things, but it does not overburden the Lord. His watch care extends to every household and encircles every individual. He is concerned in all our business and our what? And our sorrows. Praise the Lord. He is concerned in all our business and our sorrows. He makes every, he marks every tear. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, friends. Nothing passes by God. He hears every cry. He counts every tear. But then, the last paragraph there in that statement, all the afflictions and trials that befall us have, no, that befall us here are permitted to work out His purpose of love toward us. God intended, God intended for His disciples to go through this storm. God intended for his disciples to go through this storm. Did Jesus know they were going to go through a storm? Be careful what you answer. Did Jesus on earth know that he was going to go to that storm? Did he have foreknowledge that the disciples didn't? If he did, then he had advantage. Unless the Father revealed it to him, he did not know they were going to go through that storm. Unless the Father revealed it to him, remembering that Jesus did not use his divine power here on earth. He set it aside. Unless the Father revealed it to him, he did not know he was going to this storm. But he knew that if God permitted it, it would be fine. God intended for his disciples to go through a storm that night. Because God has to know what the disciples were really made of. And sometimes God has to know what you and I are really made of. They are not storms of his anger. He believes that you and I can make it through the storms. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, a promise from God says, God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able if God brings a storm, he's not going to bring... If, I'm sorry. If God allows... If God allows a storm, he's not going to allow a storm that can overcome you. Bigger than what you can bear. Bigger than what you can take. Praise the Lord. The storm was so bad that these fishermen, experienced fishermen, familiar with these waters where they used to work, where they used to fish, they used to control other storms, became helpless. 
helpless. And the best type of Christian is a helpless Christian. The best type of Christian is a helpless Christian because then you lean on God. You're forced to lean on God. They realized that they were sinking. They realized that they were sinking and they remembered the Bible says that Jesus was on board. And, and I just like and I invite you to read chapter 34 of Desire of Ages. They only remember that Jesus was on board because, you know, they're in the storm and lightning is flashing. And I don't know if you have been in the lightning outside when lightning strikes. It lights up the night for a split second. And as lightning was lighting up the sea, they saw a glimpse of Jesus sleeping. It was dark, but there was lightning and a storm. And, they, and she tells us in Desire of Ages there, chapter 34, that the lightning, ref they saw Jesus sleeping. And then, oh, Jesus is right here. They had forgotten that Jesus was with them. And they began to call out, to call out to him to call out to him. And again, chapter 34 in Desire of Ages, they called out several times before he responded. Have you ever prayed and felt that God maybe was not listening to your cries or to your prayers? But he is listening. He is listening. We read it here from my life today, from, from the testimony of Jesus, that he hears every tear, he hears every groan, every cry. All the afflictions and trials that befall us here are permitted to work out for his purpose of love toward us. They began to cry out and God heard them. And friends, sometimes we have to cry out with all that we got. You know, there are habits that you and I have that a simple prayer will not be suffice, will not be enough. There are habits that we have to cry and groan and plead with the Lord. Lord, take these thoughts out of my head. You've been, you might have been praying, but they're still there. You have to, there are habits that you have to sometimes wrestle with God as Jacob wrestled with the Lord. And Jacob did not let him go until what? Until he was sure and confident that what? God was with him. There may be times where you have to wrestle with the Lord. That you have to wrestle with the Lord and say, Lord, I cannot bear this alone. I cannot bear this anymore. Salvation is a serious business and God is wanting us to walk in a newness of life. And sometimes we may pray, Lord, deliver me from this, but we just find ourselves doing it again. And we need to really wrestle with God. Lord, help me. I can't break this habit. I can't stop doing this. I'm not going to get up until I have the assurance that you remove this from my thoughts, you remove this habit that you help me tonight, this morning, today. And Jesus woke up, stood up, and what did he say? There, verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great what? Calm. Calm. Now, some Bibles, I'm reading from the, from the New King James, says, Peace, be still. Other Bibles says, Be quiet. Be quiet. The literal translation there is, is he muscle. You, you know what it is to muscle? To put a muscle on an animal? You know what a muscle is, right? You, you cover their mouth. You normally do that with vicious dogs um, that, that can be controlled. Why? So they won't bite you, right? To stop them from barking or attacking. Here, Jesus muscled the storm. Quiet the storm. Be still. Jesus is telling you and me, any worried person, 
He's muscling us. Lord, I can't. No. Just be still. Be still. Calm down. Somebody gave me, you know, those little stress. I should have brought it. It's right here in my office. The little stress thing that you squeeze is supposed to help you with your, with your stress. It's a little face. And you squeeze it. It's a little face of a person with a little mohawk. And you squeeze it. And a voice, and a voice com says, calm down, take it easy. <laughs> Every time you squeeze it, it says that, calm down, take it easy. My kids sometimes like to play with that, they like to hear it. And God, God here is like, just be still, calm down, calm down. Friends, I need to learn that. I need to learn that. My personality is the type that I like to be in charge. I like to see things placed in order. I do not like surprises. When, they, when, when, when we're organizing a service or a program or even a Vespers or even a board meeting and, and I hear the words, well, let's wing it. Let's just see how it goes. No. <laughs> we're not going to wing anything. Who's going to be first? Okay, then what's going to be second? Okay, then what if they say this? Then what are we going to do for that? I like to see structure in, the, in things. And we like to feel that we have things under control. But God sometimes sends a situation that we cannot manage at all. These were experienced fishermen and found themselves helpless. And God may send us situations that we cannot control so we can rely wholly on Him. Wholly on Him. There from the book Prayer, page 11 in your bulletin, this, the last part of the meditation where it says, Rest yourselves wholly in the hand of Jesus. Rest yourself wholly, not partially, but wholly in the hands of Jesus. Contemplate his great love and while you meditate upon his self-denial, his infinite sacrifice made in our behalf in, in order that we should believe in him, your heart will be filled with holy joy. And what else? Calm, peace, and indescribable love. Calm down, Harley. Just take it easy. I may not see... I may not see things lining up. I'm, I may see a conflict that's not getting resolved. And God says, as long as I am in charge, I will take care of it. I, take it easy. Be still. Be calm. And I want to appeal to you. I want to appeal to you this morning with how the story begins. See, they forgot what Jesus had said when they got into the boat. When they got into the boat, what did Jesus say there in verse 35? What did he say? Let us cross over to the other side. He didn't say, he didn't say let's just go halfway. No. There was no way that boat was going to sink. No way. Why? Jesus declared, we're going to cross over to the other side. We're going to cross over to the other the other side. There was no way that that boat was going to sink. And church, there is no way that this boat is going to sink. Mm -mm. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. God is letting us know there is no way that his church, this boat, is going to sink. It's going to cross over. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. The Bible says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb of God has come and his wife has made herself ready. Jesus is saying, there's going to be a marriage. I'm coming for my people. Be glad and rejoice. Be glad and rejoice. The church is going to the other side. It may get rough, but God can see you standing on the other side. John 14, verse 1 through 3, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Calm down. Take it easy. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. And I'm preparing a place for you. I see you there. 
But he begins by saying, don't let your heart be troubled. But we have to continue believing in God and doing the will of God. No matter how bad the storm was, when you read all three stories there in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you never read a suggestion of jumping off the boat. Or, if you read the story, there were other boats along there of jumping into another boat. They all stayed in the boat, called on to Jesus. He stood up, told the storm to be quiet, because he had declared, we're going to get to the other side. We're going to get to the other side. So no matter how bad the storm, we don't see or, or read any suggestions that anybody was to jump over, friends. And so I appeal to you, brother and sister, to stay in the boat. It will get rough. It will. Not it might. It will get rough. It will get rough. Things in church may bother you. You may be a liberal and conservative or getting under your skin. Stay in the boat. Or you may be a conservative and the liberals are bothering you. Stay in the boat. Others may disagree, but stay in the boat. Problems will come in the church. And problems have come in the church. But stay in the boat. People may be difficult, but God is calling us to stay in the boat. Stay with the church. God is taking it to the other side. If you have been an Adventist long enough, you have either gone through a crisis in the church or you've seen the church go through a crisis. And the church is still marching forward. Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 206. And this I just last night remembered and I praise God for it. It goes in... We're talking about the, the, the disciples in a boat. And the storm comes. Jesus calms the storm. And here in Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 205, it says, Shortly before I sent out the testimonies regarding the efforts of the enemy to undermine the foundations of our faith through the, through the dissemination of seductive theories, I have read an incident about a ship in a fog meeting an iceberg. And she says, For several nights I slept but little. One night, a scene was clearly presented before me. A vessel was upon the waters in a heavy fog. Suddenly, the lookout cried, Iceberg just ahead. There, toward high, there, towering high above the ship, was a, was a gigantic iceberg. And then she says, An authoritative voice cried out. Do we know this, this, this statement? What did it cry out? Meet it. Meet it head on. Don't go around it. Don't turn back. Don't stop. But meet it. God is telling us the icebergs that confront us, what? Meet it. Head on. There have been icebergs that have come up along Adventist history. And the church has always met it, friends. Because Jesus is the captain. And, and this is because Jesus had declared, we're going to go to the other side. If you want to jump out, you're making a mistake. But this boat, beaten or however it is, is going to make it to the other side. Matthew 16, verse 18. Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church. On this rock, on himself. He was talking about himself. Jesus is the rock of ages. On this rock I will build my church, and not even the gates of what? Hell. Of hell will prevent it. There will be no iceberg so big that will stop this ship, this boat. Jesus is still on board, friends. And, and as, as some of the children sing or, or may remember this song, and I know that we sang it at Pathfinders before, and if you remember it, help me in remembering how does it go? As Jesus as the captain, 
I will smile at the storm. Amen. Smile at the storm, smile at the storm, as we go sailing on. As we go sailing on, friends. They made it to the other side. This church will make it to the other side. Don't waste your time with other things, icebergs popping up, coming up, trying to deviate you to get off or take a different route. Or to waste your time in other things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God caused us meet it because his church is going to go through. Revelation 19, verse 7, as we read, Jesus is coming for his bride. Rejoice and be happy. Rejoice and be happy. So church, regardless of what the devil brings, regardless of what the devil brings, will you remain in the boat? Will you remain faithful, friends? It is my prayer and request that you remain faithful to God. God is a captain, as long as God is a captain of the boat. And he is the captain of the boat. He has not left his church and he will not leave his church. He died for his church, paid for it with his blood. And I just appeal to you this morning, regardless of what the devil brings, remain in the boat and have the peace and assurance that God is with you. That God is with you. You too can sleep during the storm like Jesus did. You too can sleep. Sometimes people call me or are texting me, Hey, did, have you seen this? Hey, have you noticed that? Hey, have you checked out Facebook? I am comfortable in knowing that God is in charge of his church. I'd rather study my Sabbath school lesson than looking at other silliness things. So I appeal to you, church. Stay in the boat because God has declared is going to the other side. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, O oh Lord God, we thank you so much. We are all familiar with this story, but Lord, we thank you because you have declared that your church will make it to the other side. We know that there will be storms that the devil will bring. And we may feel that the boat is getting filled up. And we're going to sink. But Lord, you are in this. And because you are in this, it will succeed. It will succeed. So Lord, I just ask that you be with every single one here. That we may not get discouraged, but encouraged. Because you've told us that troubles and storms will come. But as long as we hold on to you and remain in the boat, we will make it to the other side. And we look forward to seeing you face to face, Lord. Be with your church, not just here in Cleburne, but around the world. As it continues to work and continue to go forward and continue to meeting any other iceberg that it confronts. Thank you, Father in heaven. Bless us on your holy day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn to your hymn books, to hymn number 466. 466, wonderful peace. Wonderful peace. 466. Let's stand as we, we sing this closing hymn.